All right, boys, honestly, it's time to get pretty hyped because 3.19 looks absolutely amazing. This is probably the most excited that I've been about uh, like a league reveal in a long time. I think I might even be more excited than 3.17. This honestly looks really amazing. There's a bunch of really cool changes and I'm gonna go over the basics of all of those changes in this video. For some of the topics that require a little bit more in depth, I'm probably gonna make separate videos talking about those. They'll be short videos, so don't expect too much, but for right now, we're just going to try to speed run the patch notes as I normally do. Also, to give you guys a quick update, I am moving towards full-time content creation now. Some of you that have been watching my stream might already know this, but with that comes some pretty decent changes. The current job market that I'm in for my normal job is looking a little uncertain right now, and I figured I might as well give this a full shot. I've been doing this for a couple years now, and I think it might be time to uh, try to go all in. So a part of this is going to be creating a Patreon. If you want to support the channel, the absolute best way to do it now is to subscribe to Patreon. And if you do subscribe, you are going to get access to some special content as well as like early releases of videos. You'll get all kinds of cool stuff like that. And if you need it, there is going to be some special one-on-one -on -one help as well. So check that out down in the description at patreon.com slash big ducks. I appreciate all of you that aren't supporting me yet, but might be supporting me in the future. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we are going to try to speed run this. I'm going to try to give you all of the specifics that you need, all of the stuff that you should be thinking about. There's a couple sections in here that are a lot of info and I wanna go a little bit more in depth into those. There'll be shorter videos, but it would increase the length of this video to an absurd amount if I tried to pack all of my thoughts about all the changes that are in here. So let's get into it. So the new Calandra League, Lake of Calandra League looks absolutely insane. If you haven't watched the reveal yet, go watch it. It's ridiculous. One of the cooler league mechanics that I think I've ever seen. It heavily reminds me of Synthesis, which I'm super excited about. And it comes with all the standard stuff that you're looking for. New league mechanic with new monsters that kill, new super overpowered items, some crazy crafting stuff. It's all ready to go. So I'm super happy about the Calandra League. That's gonna be pretty fun. Now as for new content and features, they have added a couple new skill gems. Notably, there is this alchemist mark. You might've remembered that they changed it so that you weren't gonna get flash charges from sniper's mark anymore. Plus because they've moved it to alchemist mark. Alchemist Mark is going to be something for like essentially builds that are, you know, throwing flasks. It's going to make it so that you now gain flask charges whenever you hit them, and it's going to create burning ground and caustic ground underneath enemies. Now, this isn't going to be super great for caustic ground. Like, if you are really, really hitting like very large poisons, which typically isn't the case, it'll be okay. It'll be something, right? But depending on how this scales when we get the gem levels, the burning ground could be pretty good. This could be an alternative to flame surge if you wanted to. However, I feel like maybe you'll probably just use flame surge and a different curse instead. That's my thoughts about this for right now. I'm not exactly sure how powerful this will be. We'll have to see full numbers for it. As for the other support gems, you might see a theme going forward of there being a lot of changes to shock. The shock ailment has kind of been left behind, honestly, if I really am being honest. And these new abilities do interact with shock in unique ways. I'm particularly interested in lightning conduit. This is kind of like an arc ability that calls down like a bolt of lightning from the sky. It looks pretty cool. This might be something that we mess around with early on in the league. We'll see. And the Galvanic Field is kind of just like Orb of Storms, except it applies to an enemy and chases them around and does some interesting stuff. Um, I'm not exactly sure on this one, but uh, it's 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 going to be another we'll have to see. But that's it for the new abilities. Of note, the Trial Master is back in his own Tower of Ordeals map. We're not getting Ultimatum fully back yet, unfortunately, but the Trial Master is at least here. So we should be able to get his items, apparently, is what I would assume. As for the way that we get it, Chris basically said uh do vault content and figure it out so is what it is they're adding in foil versions of pinnacle unique items uh they're just shiny that's all that they're that's all that there is there's no difference between them so that's cool i guess now beyond this we do have a couple of leagues that are being reworked i'm probably going to go more in depth on this in another video because there's a lot of changes here that are pretty cool but the tldr is that arch nemesis is being normalized to where there's not going to be as many rare monsters but they're going to give us more items and it's kind of been toned down a little bit magic monsters no longer have crazy mods anymore and arch nemesis is just going to be overall kind of better beyond is getting replaced with scourge and this is super powerful because we are going to be getting Scourge currency back. However, high-end Beyond maps might be losing a little bit. Once again, we'll go more depth on that in the next video, but Beyond is still gonna be okay in my opinion. It's just 
probably not going to be as juicy as it was before. This is going to be one of those mechanics where you just kind of like add it in instead of it being like the main thing you're working towards now. It's how I feel about it, at least right now. Harvest is getting a huge change and there's a bunch of implications about this that I'm super excited to talk about. I'm really, really happy with the harvest changes. Uh, the TLDR is that you are going to now be able to just build up harvest juice and use it to do whatever crafts you like. TFT be damned. A big change here that I am probably not super excited for is the exalted and divine orb change. This is out of left field and I'm a little concerned because this is not something that I was expecting at all. Essentially what they're doing here is that divine orbs and exalted orbs have always had the same drop rate in game, like they're very rare, but divine orbs are significantly more common because you get them from six links. So what they're doing is they're making it so six links give you orbs of fusing instead of divines and divine orbs are now becoming like the new exalted orb in this in a sense is kind of what it feels like. I don't know that this is exactly how things are going to even out, but there is a chance here that divine orbs are going to be the new like de facto big currency that you talk about when it comes to cost. What I think this is probably going to cause is people are probably going to talk in terms of chaos a lot more now. I'm not sure about that, but this is very, very strange. Um, Rerolling unique items and rare items is substantially harder now because there are just so many less divine orbs that exist now. And then exalted orbs are just, they're, they're trying to make it so that exalted orbs are actually used to craft stuff. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that. They seem to have tried to force this upon us for quite some time. Maybe this is the change and maybe this is the way that they want to go about it. But the other thing that's happening is that meta mods are now going to be crafted with divine orbs and uh, they're changing it around so that things that previously were a divine orb now are going to cost an exalted orb so i don't know i don't know how i feel about this uh there's probably a lot more to talk about here but it's something we're gonna have to see how it affects the economy not super excited for this change. There are a bunch of uniques being rebalanced and i'm gonna make a video talking about the particular uniques that are of interest but the big change here is that faded uniques are essentially being removed and i'm a little upset because there's a few faded uniques that are just completely being removed from the game here that I haven't seen any changes for. And there were a couple of these that I was really excited to use in new builds that are just gone now. So unfortunate, I guess. They did change some of the basic items that were on the list. Like, uh, let me see if I can find this here. Like Ace and a Smark now just has the trigger socketed spell when you attack with a bow. They kind of just turned most of the base versions into a better version or completely reworked the item in general. But we're losing things, as far as I can tell, we're losing things like Dreadbeak, we're losing things like Frostferno, we're losing these items that I was planning on using in some of my upcoming builds, so I'm a little bit upset about this. But um, yeah, a bit of a weird change to just completely get rid of a lot of the faded unique items, but it is what it is. They just can't be acquired anymore, and I guess we just have to deal with it, so... A little unfortunate. Now, a vast majority of this stuff that's in here is stuff that we've already talked about, so there's really not a lot to go over here. There are a few small changes that are different from what I remember. Like, in particular, under minion balance, I think that there is this change where it says the Tabukai unique amulet is getting a pretty sizable nerf. I know a lot of people use this for, like, the Popcorn SRS build, but... This potentially is a little bit of a problem. It's meaning that Popcorn SRS is looking a little bit less good than it was previously because we were seeing like a 20% minion life base at higher levels, increased damage, but now we're losing like 60% increased maximum life from Tabukai as well as like 40% increased damage. So it's moving some power out of the amulet into Summon Raging Spirit. So maybe that makes it okay. Maybe you can use a different amulet now, but I'm really not sure. Someone's gonna have to crunch the numbers on this, but we'll have to see. With most of the rest of the changes here, Chris has said that in particular, the minion changes, and he has reiterated this multiple times, the minion changes should be a change to make minion builds more powerful at the top end and less powerful at the low end. The terms that he used was he said, if all minion builds were like a seven before, but they could only really make it to a seven, now they're gonna start at like a three, but they can potentially be a 10 now. I don't know how much I believe that with the changes that we've seen here. I'm, it's just something you're gonna have to trust them on until we really see how everything works. They also are wanting it so that you can play more minion ascendancies than the Necromancer now, apparently. But I don't exactly like the way that they change Necromancer, but unfortunately it seems like that's what they're going with. Uh, this new, the new unnatural strength like node that's giving unholy might. I really don't know how I feel about this. From what I remember and what I've heard, Gazi is saying that uh, Scion is probably gonna be the new Necromancer Ascendancy. You'll have to get up with him to see what 
is actually going to go on with that. Of note, uh, a lot of people will be happy to see that Seismic Trap is officially, as far as I can tell, dead. It lost 30% damage at all gym levels, and that is probably enough with the changes that we knew about previously with Trap Cooldown and such to finally put Seismic Trap in the grave. Now, what does this mean? Gauntlet will probably be a little bit more interesting because Seismic Trap isn't going to be so absolutely prolific in that event. And besides that, the people who like Seismic Trap, um, you're just kind of screwed now. It is what it is. A seismic Trap has been way too good for way too long, but it is a pretty sizable change. Notably, there are no additional buffs to anything whatsoever. We're not getting any other changes to skills. The ones that they showed us are pretty much all that we've got. There's a thing about Vault Clarity and Awaken Hex Touch in here. Vault Clarity is just kind of getting a soul increase and a duration change. Not really much change here. Not very many people use Vault Clarity anyways. Awaken Hex Touch is just getting a bug fix. Now that the Trial Master is back, we should be able to get the Blood Sacrament skill now, granted by Relic of the Pact. But they've changed it around a little bit. So the idea here is they're trying to make it so that it's not just cast it as many times as humanly possible in a row and maybe just cast it like a normal skill instead. We'll see how this goes. There'll probably be Blood Sacrament builds that will be made off of this, but... um. You'll have to wait until we get the actual item. Now, what a lot of you are probably interested in here is the Trickster rework. The Trickster rework is actually pretty solid. I'm probably gonna make a short video talking in depth about the Trickster and all the different changes, but essentially what it's been moved towards is less of a damage over time ascendancy and more of just like a generic kind of like slippery defensive speed based ascendancy now a couple cool things in here like masteries are going to increase damage we've got this action speed bonus thing now escape artist is still around soul drinker is being moved into the trickster instead of just being like the uh shadow generic node that you can get from forbidden flesh forbidden flame of note they have taken the like chaos damage gain node from the trickster and made that the shadow basic one which i i I don't know. I mean, I guess that's cool, but I was hoping that we would get a little bit something different there. Spellbreaker is pretty insane, and we've got Heartstarper, which is actually potentially kind of good now, so that's pretty solid. Like I said, I'll probably go more in depth about this later. Juggernaut saying the same, Chieftain saying the same, Pathfinder saying the same. Most of the rest of this down here is the same. We do have changes to shock effect and how they work. This is potentially a pretty big buff, and we might be seeing more shock on more builds and maybe some more lightning builds in general because of this. Definitely some cool changes that they're doing to Shock. This is one of the major balance changes that we're really getting is that Shock is just overall going to be better in general now. Do note they have kind of nerfed Voltaxic Rift and Brain Rattler, unfortunately. If you were hoping to do some kind of like a big Brain Shock Chaos Sporker Voltaxic Rift bow, unfortunately, not gonna work anymore. They've given us a few extra sources of lightning damage on the passive tree, which is pretty cool. They've moved around a couple things, made one new wheel of passive nodes. There's a couple random small changes to things on the tree, which honestly aren't of very much consequence. They've said that reduced trap duration is only useful when combined with sunblast, but changes to sunblast might make them too powerful. This makes me think that maybe there's something having to do with Sunblast going on, but we'll talk more about that in the unique video, most likely. There's a lot of crazy uniques that were changed, so there's there's a lot of stuff in there. Looking at the Atlas changes, there were quite a few maps that were added back in. There's a couple in here that are decent, but notably the maps that have been removed, there's a lot that I think people are going to be pretty upset about. Beach is gone, Burial Chambers is gone, City Square is going to be gone, Glacier is being removed, and Tropical Island is being removed. These are some of the most popular maps in the game in a recent time, and they're all going away for this league. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but um, we're getting some back. I just don't know if they're as good as those maps, unfortunately. We've got the new list of Kyrick mods. Uh, these are pretty uh, disappointing. The Expedition one is uniquely disappointing, I feel, because from what I'm reading this, it just says areas contain an Expedition encounter, not an additional Expedition encounter. So there's really pretty much no reason to ever use this. You would just use a Scarab instead. Like, I, I mean, I guess if you really wanted to have four other specific scarabs and then also an expedition but if you're running expedition content you're probably wanting to run gilded expedition scarabs anyways this is pretty worthless in my opinion however of note the heist one is back two additional smugglers caches is a pretty decent amount of currency for six chaos 
This is essentially just printing you money for the most part. So this is pretty good. This will probably bring the cost uh, investment needed to run heist stuff lower, which I'm happy about. So this should be pretty cool. I think most people will probably be running heist on their map device. The other ones are okay. Ambush is pretty decent. Um, Essence is okay. Blight is okay. Legion's okay. But that expedition one, in my opinion, is pretty bad. The map device now does remember which map crafting option you used before. So get ready to accidentally spend like 100 chaos on map crafting when you didn't mean to. They apparently have some user interface changes and quality of life improvements that are being revealed in some of the upcoming news posts. We will have to see what happens with those. They are making it so that accessing the Path of Exile trade website now requires you to be logged in. This is overall probably a good change. It should reduce the impact of people like spamming the trade website towards the beginning of the league, hopefully make it so it doesn't go down randomly. Notably in the bug fixes, we have a Maven change where previously the punishment debuff that you could get from the little beams in the last phase made it so that you could not recover life from most ways but there were a bunch of instant methods like recover life when a trap is triggered that could still give you life back those have been removed now so the maven last phase can't be cheesed by a lot of different builds now so maven got a decent amount harder also you can't cheese the eater of worlds escapable doom anymore by exiting the arena notably there was an issue where effects of brittle and sapped could not be affected by ailment effect was being changed also apparently the maximum more physical damage taken by enemies from pride was not getting affected by aura effect which is really solid however on the other side um the aura effect of maim debuff applied by flesh and stone is being nerfed so if you're using both of those it's probably going to be like a net nothing now i know a lot of people are freaking out about fix the bug where lightning strike could hit a single target twice from one attack this is not what a lot of people think that it is i'm pretty sure someone from ggg confirmed this over on reddit that this was a specific bug where if you moved in a certain way and the boss or enemy was moving in a certain way you could double dip your damage this isn't where if you melee something it gets hit by the projectile and the attack that should still work as far as i'm aware notably cremation is getting a buff for league start leveling because now you'll be able to use this with elemental overload much easier as it's going to roll critical strikes for every single projectile so you should on average be able to keep up elemental overload more consistently this is really good for that one of the builds that i am going to be working on does use cremation and elemental overload and beyond that there's not really much else to go over and that is going to be it for the video i'm super excited for this league there's a bunch of stuff to talk about i'll make more videos about those specific topics because a lot of this is really really super cool but the patch notes in and of themselves are honestly a little lackluster here there were some changes that i was expecting some changes that i expected to be on there that weren't on there like nightblade is going completely unscathed but seismic trap is getting destroyed so it is what it is. I'm not super happy with these patch notes, but I'm also not super upset. We didn't get as many buffs as I would have liked. I would have liked to see a few more buffs to particular things, but the shock changes will probably do something. So remember, boys, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos, and stay safe out there in Ray Class. And I'll see you in 3.19 Lake of Calandra.